Hey guys, this is a really big release. I created an entire town and you're looking at some of the new assets that were created for it. And I, I modeled this town after, um, after like a popular town, you know, the town master's hall. It could be a, could be a building inside of uh, Fandolin. And so, you know, this is a, a building that's kind of modeled after my interpretation of the um, Lion Shield Coster. Right, tons of detail in these, and these are all deployable as assets. There's also multiple versions of all of these. Um, thanks to Tom Cartos and to Forgotten Adventures, you, leveraging both of their pretty excellent libraries to put these together. I created this in a way that's modular. Everything's made out of pieces, everything you're looking at. You can build, reshape, reform. You can expand the town. You can even do things like putting fort walls up. You can uh, you know, change how things teleport. Uh, but you can also, they're also all linked together with teleportation pads. I'm gonna walk you through how this all works. Here, for example, is the keep that you've seen me uh, use before. I've used that as sort of the, the base. And just tons of parts. There's about um, there's about 12 overland scenes. There's some underground scenes. You're looking at the farmhouse here. There's this special modular farm that you can put together. Um, I even made a whole map of the entire town in both uh, daytime and nighttime. And you can see and open up scenes for the different parts of the town. And you can really take this and expand on it whatever you like. This is really proof of concept. I'm gonna walk you through all the new assets that I developed for this. Of course, all the other assets are being used. Things like uh, walkways and, and shading and, and new components that you can drop into empty spaces. But you can see all the different types of buildings and the variations of them. They're also available in snowy versions. And of course, I'm really excited about this. This is Caves. This is uh, Echo's newest release for the cave system. I think he did just an amazing job with that. Um, but then Rothji also has uh, produced some more interesting stuff. I mean, look at these, um, look at these components that he's got inside. These are just deployable prefabs that you can drop into any, any dungeon, even if you're not using this particular dungeon. And of course, here's his really spectacular ice caves. This is also all modular just dropped in and placed however he wanted. And I think this is just really, really well done. We've been working for quite a while on this project. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this and let's jump into the walkthrough. Okay, so let's start with how to actually get the town into your world. Uh, first things first, you have to install my modules. If you're using my free module, the town square here is a part of the free module. And you can see and um, interact with that. And even the prefabs will be in your actor's compendium that you can deploy. If you're using the free module, it only supports D&D 5e. You can try it with another game system, but you might have errors with uh, with token attacher. If you use the premium module, it's, uh, it's, it works with any game system. And what you need to do is make sure that the modules are installed and active. So if you're using the free module, it's just called Bailey with the Maps Pack, just make sure that that's uh, installed and then ticked on, and then it will create compendiums for you, which I'll show you in a second. If you're a premium subscriber to my Patreon, then you wanna install or make sure you have active the Towns module that has all of the prefab elements of the town system and the wilderness system. And you also um, want to install the Cabal Dungeon module. This module will help serve up the tiles for some of the uh, underground elements that I'll show you here in a bit. Once those are active and turned on, they will introduce new compendiums for you. Now I use a, a module called Compendium Folders, and I recommend that you use it as well. You don't have to. Um, but this is what it does for you. Essentially, it lets you organize your compendium so they're easier to find things. And then once you do, if I open up my actor compendium, for example, I can find all the Bailiwiki compendiums that are created. This one is created by the town module. This one's created by the core premium module. This is all of like my main like detailed maps and boats and things like that. And then this is the, the free module where you can find some of the prefabs that you can deploy here and this will have the, the prefabs for the new system as well. You can then just right click and you can hit import, but I recommend if you're using this module, 
that you do it this way. If I open this up, because the town's assets, there's so many, I put them into these folders to make it easier to find things. And so if you just go to this little icon here, this is introduced by the, the compendium folders tool. If you click that, and this will actually merge everything along with all of these into, into your world. And if you already have it in your world, and you want to create a new one, just uncheck this, this will write over existing ones. So generally speaking, you want to uncheck that and click yes. And it will take all of these folders and put it into a nice neat little folder over in your world. And it'll look something like this. And then you can deploy assets from in here. You can search for them for things like, you know, tactical assets, um, or maybe you just won't want to search for blood and you can drag blood directly onto your map. So uh, remember we're using token attacher module. So you have to have that installed and active as well for all of these actor prefabs to work. And uh, so you'll introduce, you'll uh, import your actor prefabs, assuming that you want to do some building. And then there's also some scenes that you'll, that you want to uh, import. In this case, here's the town scenes and I'll show you what's inside of this. Notice these, if you're not using the compendium folders module, those artifacts will show up. You can just ignore those, but here I can, again, just import all of these scenes with this folder structure. And what this gives you is right at the top, all of the new releases. So here's the new releases we're going to go through today. And then here's all of the new town scenes, as well as the underground scenes, as well as the maps. There's even a parchment version of the map, if you prefer that. And then here's all of the farmland components for the, uh, I deployed into here. So you can import those uh, through your scene uh, tool. And then what you really need to do, and the two most important things, are your, in your macros and your journal entries. There's a macro folder for towns. And in that macro folder, and you can just right click it and just import all content and it'll put it into a folder inside of your macro folder, but it'll give you all of these. You don't necessarily need all of them, but some of them make things like traps work or they make the sound of um, rustling leaves as you walk through the cornfield. So I recommend you just download all of these. And these, for example, will help set elevation. So there's some really interesting macros in here, some token magic effect macros. This one is really helpful if you want to remove a filter off of something, but the rest of these will make things automatically work in my world. So you want to just import them into your world. You don't have to necessarily deploy them into your hotbar. They just need to sit here in your macro folder. The other thing you want to do is go to the town's journal entries. And you can see there's a, a general description of how modular town works with some links to all of the modules that I use, some links to um, tutorial videos on some, more, um, some of the more important ones. Uh, and then there's these two really important ones. They don't look important because they're just called GM only and stare. But what these are are special journal entries that have, that have the permissions configured for them so that a teleport will either automatically work for players or will only work for the GM. So you want these two journal entries to live inside of your world. They should be here in your journals tab. You notice I have stare and GM only. It's very important that you have these two installed before you start importing scenes and, and running things because the scenes are going to be looking for these two journal entries in order for their teleports to work. And there's a lot of teleporting going on in here. The rest of these are just very simple journal entries that will just make this map work. So if I double click on the town and I click here, and I can navigate then to this Eastern road and it'll, it'll take me as the GM straight here. And you can make that something that your players can interact with as well. So it's very important. You have token attacher and multi-level token at a minimum installed to make a lot of this town work. So with that, let's start going through just a tour of the town very basically. So you understand how it's generally set up. This is the main square. This is where your adventurers would find something like the lion shield. If that's what you want to call this. There are signs that are deployed. This one is set so anyone can hover over it and read what this is. So you can change the name of this particular location. Uh, there's a notice board 
that you can put a little um, or, or multiple pins here if you'd like to have players be able to come up and read sort of notices. And then here's another example of a of the sign. This is a deployable asset inside of the system. So if I search for sign, I can drag this sign out onto the field and you can hear it. There's also, as you heard, ambient noise when you've got a token selected. You've got a shrine, you've got the home of, you know, if you follow like the Fandolin lore, you may find this home relevant to your story. It may be just a home of somebody else, but this home has inside of it a, a, a way to go downstairs. And there's actually quite a bit of that here in this. Here's an undertaker. I'm using the roofs module, which is very important in order to make these roofs hide. But this building also has a, a downstairs. So there's actually a whole underground level to this, this entire place. Here's a curio shop that's doing some smuggling. This one, if you have the premium version, will actually go all the way to the, uh, you know, what's essentially like the sleeping giant tavern. And you can see there's a kind of a smuggling operation linked to there. Entirely changeable by you, just something that I thought would be a good story hook. This is where the town master uh, might reside. You've got folders and filing cabinets. And then downstairs is, uh, I'll show you in a second, some cells, some holding cells. And of course, here's the main tavern and inn. There's just a few uh, sleeping places. There's other taverns and other inns in this town. But this one is using my modular um, seller system, which if you go out back, you can go down underground underneath this as well. And I'm going to show you that here in just a second. The things I want to point out before I do that, all of these assets, like these torches, everything, you know, will all of a sudden come on at night. If you turn the lights down, we'll, we'll show you that here briefly. There are ambient noises like fires burning and things like that. If you're near water or if you're near these, um, you're inside of these outhouses, you'll hear a dripping sound and you can move all of these assets around by the way. So if I go out here, these are all invisible to your players, but you'll notice here's the control token for the outhouse. And if I move that, the outhouse and all of its attachments and walls move with it, including the sound that's inside of it. And so this is how you can manipulate and move things around. If here's the, uh, you know, here's this location here. If I deleted it, this whole building would disappear and I could swap it out for another building. Um, here's the uh, bushes out front and I can move these around, delete them and reconfigure them. There's also tiles happening here. So this sort of centerpiece with cobble is just a tile and I can move it around. I can swap it out. If I double click on it and I go into here, I can see other alternatives. So you can see right now I've got selected this one here. It's a cobble tile. But if I wanted to, I have that same thing in a mossy version. If I update this, you'll see it turned to a mossy cobble. I also have it available in a dirt version if you would prefer that. And that's how you use those. These tiles are not available as prefabs. You just have to go into the tile path. But that's generally how you work here. Now let's go underneath the town. And to do this, I'm just gonna demonstrate how this works. So this player is going to go downstairs. When you see a green token like this, it means that players can interact with it. Um, I'm gonna right click that token just to show you. This token or this uh, journal pin is pointed to stare. Remember that one that I had you import? And that's important because that's configured for players to be able to interact with it. If a player is standing within this teleport region, this is invisible to them, by the way, only the GM can see it. If they're standing inside of it and they have their, uh, it should automatically show them their pin. If it doesn't, you can always tell your players to toggle the, the pin uh, on and they'll be able to essentially just click that and it'll teleport them. To them, it'll be automatic. It'll take them to the next scene. For the GM, you have to follow them yourself to the scene. And here we find our players are now downstairs. And they're in this holding cell area. 
if I zoom out, the players don't know this, but there's other things happening in this scene. This is the smuggling area. And you'll notice that this pin is in red. That means that only the GM can interact with it. So the GM or somebody sitting up in the top level must essentially lower the crane and hoist players and things with them upstairs. But you'll notice there's this hallway and this is all built with the modular dungeon system. And that's why you want that system installed as well. This leads ultimately to a staircase that has an automatic teleportation point. I have this pointing to, in the premium version, this is pointing to another scene. In the free version, you'll have to code that to go somewhere else. This is the basement underneath the coster. You can see there's just some storage here, but maybe you don't want this. Maybe you want an entirely different basement. I've got other basement options available, a lot of them actually. And there's even a whole like smugglers operation that you can put down here. Likewise, underneath that other home, there's a secret door leading to a staircase and that staircase will be in them over to here. And there's this sort of secret meeting room. Again, you can change all of these things. I can decide I don't want benches in here and I can remove those and I can put something else in. I can have a fireplace. Remember that if you want to manipulate things, you may have to turn on your quick edit mode. That's a token attacher function. When I have quick edit mode turned on, I can take things like tiles and move them freely. I can even take control tokens and move them and nothing else will move with it. Once I'm done, I can turn that off and now everything just locks into place again and it saves uh, so that it's all in the right place when you when you light it up again. This is underneath that inn and tavern, but again, you can change this to anything you want. If you want to leverage the dungeon system, there's quite a few options. Um, I'll just show you, we'll do a search for hallway. And you can see I've got all these hallways that I can deploy. And this is just with the Bailiwiki tiles. You have all sorts of other options. You have cave options now with Echo, which we'll go through in a little bit. But that's how these generally work. I'm going to go back up to the top and I'm going to show you how teleportation works now. If I have a player in this scene and that player decides that they want to go adventuring off in this direction, you'll notice this teleportation zone. Again, it's invisible to them, but if they stand in it, these pins will appear. And if they click on them and notice they're green and it says to the Western district. So if I click on that, It'll take me then to that district and I'll find my player here automatically waiting for me. And they can go and explore around this district as well. You can see I'm using a different motif here. Some of these, this is a uh, component of the marketplace system I just dropped into here because it was mining related tools. And some other things to point out with this, notice they can continue to explore the town. They can go that way, they can go to the south, they can go to the north. And then instead of creating more scenes, I, when it comes to locations like this, where you know this, this uh, miner's exchange has a basement, I decided to deploy the basements right here in the scene itself. But what I did was I blocked them off with a wall. And what this does is it keeps all of this stuff invisible to your players. But when your player is actually sitting in there and they don't realize that this happens when they teleport down from, you know, the exchange to here, all they can see is just what's in this room and the surrounding walls. And then if I decide that I want to teleport them up, then they come right back up to the exchange. And the same thing with the, and the same thing with this over here, this is the entry point. Again, this is using the modular system to add a cellar entrance. If you want to add your own cellar entrance to any building, just type in cellar and you'll find these different options for cellar entrances. They come with teleportation zones and pins already set up. You just need to code the zone so that it, it works properly. But you see some of the new elements with this release are like, for example, these 
uh, wood piles, which have their own tactical sort of pieces built into it so that you can lay them out and create a more interesting and tactically interesting map. This scene is the approach to the now currently destroyed keep. As you know, this keep, this is actually a facade that's available in my town system. And it's an entire building that's linked to a whole series of other scenes. So for example, if I type in infested keep, and if I've imported these from my premium module, now these, again, these have to be imported from the premium module. I didn't mention that earlier, if you plan on using the keep. Uh, but this will give you access to all of these levels of this keep. And this is the infested version where it's all dilapidated. You can have your players conquer this and then actually replace it with the regular keep, which is here. Here's the now cleaned up version of the keep. I'll just show you an example of like the ballroom. And so your players can then use this as a base of operations, or you can have someone else occupy the keep that uh, is important for NPC storytelling. But that's how this works. I'm gonna show you what links to this keep here in a second and how you can get at least to the infested keep with this version. But um, I did wanna show you that you can change that keep out. This is the infested keep. Once they replace it, you can look up the term facade and you can see all the different fa uh, different facades. The facade for the keep can just be dragged out and deployed. So here's now the renewed and impressive and fully functioning keep, and I can just replace this one with that one. This one I can delete. I'm doing some different things on this map, particularly with the walls. I am using wall height, so if you have a player flying, they can see over these ridges if they're not. They, they can't see over the ridges and these walls, they can't pass through this way, but they can pass through the other way. This is just to make this map more tactically interesting if you wanna use it for, uh, for a battle or something like that. I also have hidden up here a cave. This cave currently doesn't go anywhere, but I wanted to include it so you could see how it's used. This cave can be deleted. Here you have the control token for the cave right over here but it may be another path in or something interesting that you want to do. There's the roofs module over this tree. So when your players walk under the tree, it'll help them see that there's a cave here, but just some things to make this more interesting and to give you some inspiration on how you might, uh, might do some things with this particular map. You notice you can teleport in here from the previous road. And let's go do that now. So here I am now on this in this area and this is where you'll find the main tavern that the you know in the Fandolin lore where the red brands hang out this is essentially just one of my taverns from the modular system that uh, also has a downstairs next door is a home um, but i wanted to use a dirty big tavern where you might have some fighting or something going on in here when i click on that Unless it takes me down to this basement, this basement, like I did before, is sort of sequestered behind walls on the same scene. So your players don't know it, but they're on the same scene. And it's if they go to this trap door down, this teleports you over to this scene. And then it's from this scene that you can teleport over to the underground operations. So again, your players don't know how all this stuff's laid out, but this is how it generally works. Otherwise, you've just got other interesting buildings that your players may never look inside of. Maybe you lock the doors to them, but here's a, here's a magic shop with the magic owner that lives next door. And it's got some cool stuff going on and other tactical elements that your players can sneak up to this building. They can sneak around to the sides, that sort of thing. Again, you can change this around however you want. This map is the main road into town. So your players would come into this town from here. This teleport does not link to anywhere. You would activate this if you want to have it linked somewhere. You'd have you'd activate this maybe to like the main regional map that you're using. And then when your players come to this town, they would start in this square. But if I go to multi-level token, you can see 
exit out of town code somewhere. That means this doesn't really talk to any other teleportation zone until you make it do that. As they come into town, there are some buildings that they can explore. This is, uh, this is a bakery that the Gray Sentinel made with a home next door to it. Here's just another home. Here's, you know, what would be the uh, Barthens provisions, or it's just general provisions for this particular town. And it's got just some deployable assets inside of here. You can get rid of all of these things by deleting the control tokens for them outside. But you'll notice there's some teleportation zones that aren't necessarily even tied to the road. But they will take your players to other interesting places. This is the town farm. I have a whole video on how this farm works. So I won't go into too much detail here. I'll just say that this is the main screen that your players will start with. You've got teleportation on this main road here and in here. You also have a lot of regions going on where you can automatically make uh, sounds fire as your players move through the cornfields. These cornfields are set up in a way that your players can't see through over the corn. But you can have some really fun tactical adventures on this map by doing that. This is the farmhouse, and then there's a barn connected to it. They're both two stories. And the way that I accomplish that is I mirror them over here. So when you're in the barn, you can go up to the second story and explore up here. You can go up to the second story of the house. It's got a teleportation zone at the staircase. Your players may use this as a base or a place to stay. You've even got an outhouse and some other things out here that you can use. But this whole region here, if a player is standing outside on the ground, they get reflected over to here. You'll notice my player, their token is here as well. That's so that you can see them in both places. And I cover it in my other video, but you can also explore this cornfield. You can also get lost in this cornfield, in fact. You notice my player automatically teleported. So you have to have farmland installed. And your players will teleport into what is essentially a nine square grid. And they can go explore this. They can You can have different encounters sort of hidden in here. They can get lost because they'll loop back on themselves. But if they take this path, they go to the left and then they go up one. It's in farmland nine that I've placed this special sort of encounter now, or not encounter, but this is a, this is a cave. This cave doesn't actually go anywhere yet. You have to figure out where you want this to go. I do have a cave that you can have it linked to, but I wanted to put this in as an example because you can change this cave. Notice all of my crops are all just components. They're just tiles that I can drop in and out so I can make this entire thing different than what you see here. Here's my, uh, let's see if I can find my cave control token. Here's my cave control token. So I can delete that cave entirely and, and make this a bigger clearing and have a, an encounter there. Or I can have something else here. I can have a tower sitting in the middle of this. It's really up to you what you want to do with this farmland. I'm not going to go through the rest of the town. Once you have an idea of how the town works, then you can navigate around and understand what these are. If you're following the Fandolin lore, you can see the approximation of what these, these areas might be, right? This is called an orchard. And you can explore how they're linked to this orchard, for example, um, links back to the scene I was just in. So there's kind of a back way to it. You've got this sort of commercial district where you've got the, the smithy and you've got some other shops around here. This is sort of the northern district from the center of town. But hopefully that gives you an idea of how you can use these. And also you have the, the town maps. This is the town in the daytime. And then I've got a version of it at night. You could just use the daytime map and then put lights in it and, and that sort of thing. But I think this looks better for a nighttime map because I, I, I specifically made it so that the, the lights were, you know, the aesthetics were, I think, more pleasing to me at least. But you also have a parchment version of this. If you just search for map in your new scenes, you can get all the different versions. So this is the parchment version of that map in case you don't want to bother with daytime and nighttime. And again, if you click on these, you can just open up that scene 
and then you can drag your players in there if you're looking for a starting point. The last thing I'll show you is before we go into the the assets is this is another scene. It's called uh, the town 13. Uh, this is the ruins and um, underground. And what this is, is a basically recreated, at least my interpretation using my modular dungeon elements, the the part of uh, the Fandolin adventure where they're underneath the ruins. This is a red brand hideout. And you can see all these different things that I've set up. You, you'll kind of notice, you know, this, this, you know, main uh, chasm in the middle, but I'm using a lot of the new elements that I've introduced like beds and tables and other things to essentially dress this area. And the way you get in here is this is theoretically the entry point. You can just, as the GM drop them in here, there's actually not another scene to link them to here. You could create it. You could create a forest scene, for example, with a cave or a well, and they find their way down into here. But this is essentially just a recreation of that. There is a working trap here, for example, and everything else should generally make sense. These are an approximation of those, those holding cells. And if your players ultimately get to this staircase here, I've included a special version of the basement of the infested keep. It's inside of the town uh, components here. And this is an alternative to the normal basement of the infested keep. It's exact same basement, except it's already pre-configured for a ladder to lead up through this crypt. So this crypt is essentially accessible through a ladder. And this tile here that's over the crypt can be removed to show that it's closed. So you can use this scene, whether you you started in the infested keep itself and found your way down here and finally found the secret entrance through the, through the keep, or whether you started through the secret entrance and found your way up here. This gets you into the infested keep and you can continue your adventure on up this staircase and some other staircases will lead up to the main infested keep area so that you can, you or your players can clear it out. But I just wanted to point that out that, that it all links ultimately to this special scene. Make sure you don't have the normal basement to the infested keep or it will have conflicts with the teleport. So you just want one basement in your, in your world. Okay, so let's look at all the components that came with this release that you can use in whatever maps that you built. Here's a, uh, there's, there's two release pages because there's just a lot that came out with this release. And this isn't even all of it, but I kind of condensed it down. First of all, you've got new building types. If we want to see what a building is on this page so that you can look it up in your actor compendium, just double click its control token. And it'll tell you that this is Town Master's Hall. And then I use these to give a unique number to a building type. So these are both C2, which means they're class two or middle class buildings. They're not low class, they're not high class, but they're class two. And then the 125 just gives them a unique identifier. So if you wanna find this building and its variants, just type in C2125. Oops, I have to be in my actors tab. And you can see the Town Master's Hall, the Tavern and Inn version, the Empty version, and then you have snowy versions of all of those. So this entire town can be uh, put into snow, and I'll, I'll have that in, uh, in a subsequent release. I'll have this entire town in a snowy version. But just to kind of dive in here, you've got this, which is essentially what would might be the, the Lion Shield coster. You've got this sort of private viewing room. You've got the um, ar the significant armor and weapons room in the back. You've got more of an office with a safe in it. Uh, of course, you've got a bathroom because it's a large, nice building. This is where you get your general provisions. You've got everything from fishing equipment to tools to, um, you know, maybe some nice uh, garments and things. Just sort of everything. There's even potions and other things. It's up to you to decide how you want to stock this. But it's supposed to be the, the major um, supplier of the town for a lot of things. And then, of course, it's got its downstairs basement that's all, it's pre-coded. You just have to add a basement. If you're going to add this into a, a map, you also need to add the basement somewhere and have that basement be linked to this multi-level token zone. This same building is also available as a tavern. And this tavern has 
tavern sounds already built into it. So when your players walk in, they'll hear tavern sounds. This is the kitchen. It's got its own basement. And then you've got some fairly large rooms here on both sides. I went with this shape because some of you were asking for alternative shapes that you could put in, you know, let's say have a road that was curving around and things like that. So this is an attempt to start to give you guys some more shapes. All of the tables and things are situated in such a way that you can put NPCs uh, cleanly on these benches and it'll, it'll all work out. You can put your bartender back here. Moving on to some of the other ones. Here's the town master hall. Pretty self-explanatory. Here's his office. It's got some liquor and things that I figured this type of person would have. You've got your bathroom. You've got your down, uh, your, your downstairs. This one would potentially go to the cells or you could have it go to anywhere else. You do have a tavern version of this as well. You'll see me do this pretty regularly. Taverns are so common that I'm going to try to make every building I make have a tavern version of it. But this one is just sort of decorated in a particular motif. And it's got a lot of rooms sort of collected together. And it's got its own ability to have a, a basement if you decide to make that active. This is the home in the town square that we saw. The free version will have this. The premium version will have these other um, versions, just like the buildings up above. And again, these are all available in snowy versions. Here's just a very small tavern. Here's one that you can deploy just to have a place for your players to sort of end up somewhere. It doesn't have any rooms. It's just a bar. And then here's the barn. This barn is interesting. Um, it's a two-story barn, and I made it so you could deploy it anywhere, but... To have the second story work, you have to have it sitting in the same scene or in a different scene like like I did with the um, like I did with the basements. So you can look up barn and you can see you have level one and level two. If I pull level one out, it it technically is the entire barn, but you can only walk in. And it's only uh, sort of equipped with level one. Level two would be dragging out its twin and putting that in the same scene. I don't know if that makes sense, but come hit me on Discord if you have questions about that. Next up, we have a new basement, which I mentioned, which has cells. Uh, and it has this automatically set up. We have new components that you can drop into empty buildings. So we have different fireplaces. These are set up so that you can just drop a fireplace, like I said, into an empty building and immediately give it some decor. So like if we took this fireplace and rotate it, if you drag it into just an empty wall, you can see it's set up so that it's flush to the wall. If you have to adjust it, you can either using quick edit mode or you can just hold down shift and you can put this so it's not snapping to grid and you can put it in very specific places. You also have a desk. This is the same desk that you saw in the, um, in the town master's hall. You have a bookcase, you have a bed. This can be a very common thing that you'll use and I'll show you how I deploy these in a second. You have all the different tables that you saw in the taverns in case you wanna make your own tavern or just throw these tables down in a dungeon or something like that. Log pile, the lumber, You've got the outhouse that I mentioned before. Uh, this outhouse does have roofs module working as well. It's got uh, walls and it's even got sound that comes from inside there. It's a dripping sound. Your notice board, of course. And you've got this new asset, which is just mine cars that you can drop anywhere that you feel like you want to have some mine cars sort of deployed. I've also introduced these paths. You can come in here and you can double click on them with your tile tool and you can you can see the file path to get to them and all the different options you have for deploying them. They're meant to just merge together very well, right? So you can see this is a path of cobble that's just merging together with this larger cobble piece. And all of these merge together as well. So you can create whatever kind of paths that you want. Let's say that you want this path to be bigger though. If I double right click it, I can see I can change the dimensions. Or the other way that you do it is let's go to, I'm going to copy that path, I'll open up my file picker, 
I'm going to paste it into there. Then it'll take me to all of these. Now let's say that I, if I drag this piece out, I've got, you know, a muddy thing that's that big. But let's say that I wanted to make it bigger. I made it bigger by decreasing the number of pixels. But let's say I wanted to make it smaller. Change that to 200. And now I've got a very small patch. So that's how you can manipulate the size of your roads in these patches just by changing the DPI of your tile picker. The same thing applies here. I did put the paths, by the way, for all of these in here. If I go to my drawing tool, and I double click that and go to text. Here's the path that I would need. I'll just copy that. I'll go into here and I'll paste it enter and it takes me directly to where all of these are located. The same thing for these shadows. You may wonder what are these things for? Well, these help with just creating variations in your terrain. You may or may not use them, but they're, I find they're very helpful. Like this can be a ridge, right? Very easily make a ridge. Um, you can put these on very flat spaces where maybe you have a, just a very simple terrain. It'll make it interesting and make it look more varied. So this is just an aesthetic thing it may be a bit of a tactical thing for you to be able to shape your, your maps the way that you want to. And again, you can make these bigger or smaller using the DPI trick that I showed you a second ago. Next up, thanks to a couple of great Patreons um, of mine in my community, um, the traps are now upgraded. It used to be that you couldn't have more than one of any kind of trap on your map. In this case, this is this grass trap. But with the new macros that hopefully you've imported, and you can find them by going to trap, these, these all connect back to these prefabs. So these prefabs are already set to call back to whatever macro is the right macro for them. But now, instead of not working or not being able to have more than one trap, these actually now work. So I'll drag a player out. And if he walks into this trap, You'll hear a sound effect. So let me turn my sound on here. Let me hit, hear the sound effect. And you'll notice that there are one-way walls here. So once they're in there, they've got to make a roll to get out. But now you can have as many traps as you want in a particular scene, which I think is a lot of fun. If you want to Fix that trap, just go to quick edit mode, go to your tile tool, and then right click this tile and go back to hide it again. What the macro does is it unhides whatever tile is in proximity to this region. And the region that I'm talking about is this multi-level token region. So each of these boxes that's are invisible to your user, it's a multi-level token region. It doesn't actually teleport. There is one trap that does drop your users and teleport them. But what this one does is when a player enters it, it will trigger that macro and it will offer up the name of its, of its tile to actually hide with that macro. And so that's what makes the, uh, it'll, uh, sorry, unhide. So it'll unhide the tile and it'll fire that sound and that's what makes the trap work. I did want to mention that the roofs, uh, I did upgrade the roofs. So instead of needing the token magic effect uh, module to make your roofs have a drop shadow. I've just included drop shadows in all my roofs and you'll see them included going forward. So there's a, there's a drop shadow here that you can barely see, but it's there just to help make the roof look more three-dimensional. And the last thing I'll mention on this page is my buildings. I'm starting to move away from, you know, this, this one still has the, uh, the ground and earth sort of bordering it. And that's what I would have called a, a rural deployment. And I have town deployments where it's instead of, you know, dirt, it's got concrete in, in my buildings moving forward. And eventually all of them will be like this. It's just now a shadow. And that means you can deploy this prefab onto any terrain, whether it's cobble for a city or whether it's something else like ground or grass, and this building can sit in whatever environment that you want it to. Moving forward, here's another building type that's new. This is the miners exchange that you saw. And this is the, um, if you just follow like Vandalin lore, there's 
this potential for this this building to to accommodate some of that. But this is just sort of an administrative building that also has a lot of maps and things for you know prospecting and and maybe deeds and titles and things like that. This is a kind of a central hub for the for the town. It, it is of course available in a tavern version and a, a pretty sizable inn bolted into it. And it does come with empty versions that are standalone. This is the woodworker's home, and this is his shop. A ton of detail in here that I think you'll find interesting, but it's of course also available as a tavern and then a smaller inn, both of them deployed in the, in the town system. And then this is the, the farmhouse. Much like the barn, it's available with a second story, but you have to have that second story somewhere else, like in the way that I deployed it or, or in whatever way that, that your players could get to that second story. So you have to play around with what works there. Unfortunately, there's not a, a clean and easy way right now to do two-story buildings. So this is kind of my first adventure into being able to introduce two-story buildings for you guys. Next up, this is an improvement. You're looking at the fort wall. No longer does it have the built-in terrains around it. This one, just like the buildings, can be deployed anywhere. I wanted you to be able to deploy this particular wall and gate system and tower system into your town if you decide that you want to fortify your town with, with some walls. So these are all, it's automatically like this. There's some problems with the damage tiles I'm still working with this system, but I think for now this is a pretty good enhancement so that you guys can build walls anywhere you want. Of course, there's more tiles for um, creating crops. There's snow and regular tiles. And if you want to get to them, just open up one of these and you can see where they're all living. There's a, a full map of crops. And then there's, there's ones that you can just drag onto any map and introduce crops onto the map. Here's also a snowy version of the of the keep that I showed you earlier, or at least the terrain around it. And then of course, the, these crops themselves are modular now. So if you are in your actor's compendium and you look for crop, you'll find all the different varieties. These all have those walls, those special walls built into them where you can pass through them, but you can't see through them. And they also have these multi-level token regions, which you can see very faintly. Again, your players can't see these, but the GM can. And if I click this open, I can see that it calls out to this special macro called leaves rustling. And as players move through this region, it'll keep calling that macro. And that's what makes that rustling sound. So you can deploy these in any configuration that lets you have like, for example, a very large space in a large clearing, or maybe you could make a maze out of it. I'm not sure. Um, but this is, you know, these are all just pieces that you can throw in on your map and create stuff like this. Okay, so let's look at some of the new dungeon stuff that's available in the dungeon module. And this, this is the Chain Splitters Doom Halls. This is from Aiko. He's been working on this for a bit. And it's really smart how he did it, but it's all just pieces, right? So this pillar is actually a prefab in and of itself that's got lights and other things attached to it. If I want to pull his assets in, I can go, uh, you can do a search for ACO if you have your search compendium module um, going, but it'll be under, uh, I have it under my community dungeon. Yours may be in a different place. But eventually you're looking for ACO 22 and you want the actor compendium. If I open this, you'll notice he's using the compendium folders as well. And let's say I want Chain Splitters Doom Hall. I just need to click this. I'll bring it in. I won't merge it by name. I just bring in a nice clean folder. And it'll start the process of importing it into your world. And we'll give it a second to finish that process. Now what I have is chain splitters doom halls here. And if I want to just quickly filter all these, I can just type CDH, but here's all of your pieces that ACO has made available. And you'll have to play around and refer back to this map to see how they fit together. But he had to do some really, really creative stuff in order to make like modular rooms. So for example, 
let's look for an egress. Here's an example of a room that's got this special egress. And if I manipulate this, you can see that that egress tile helps just kind of make sure that all the walls and everything end up in the proper place and that you're covering up sort of the edges. Remember that you have to turn on quick edit mode if you ever want to move things around. Like let's say that tile was in the wrong spot. Let's say it was underneath everything and I had to bring it up. I do that by turning on quick edit mode. But I think this is super well done, really well executed. I hope you guys have fun with that one. Now let's look at Rothji's introductions. He's introduced um, Bonehorn, uh, Dwarven Halls, if you will. And you can see um, how he's deployed them. These are all of his control tokens. Of course, you can always hide these control tokens so that your players don't see them. If you want to hide all of them, just hit Control A, select all of your tokens, and then you can toggle all of them to an invisible state. You can also turn on quick edit mode and you can move tokens out of the field of play and over to the side, for example, if you want to. But he's just introduced a bunch of new interesting assets that you can come through and, and look for yourself and see, see what you like. I really like this. He created the ability to have a cave sort of entrance into the halls. You've got some you know, weapon racks and other things that you could use in lots of different dungeons. He even made some custom doors that look really nice. And of course, he's got more to this deployment. He's made all of these other prefabs, like these, this piping system. This prefab uses token magic effects to make that electrical effect, but it is all attached. Oops, that's, that's my torch. It is all attached to this prefab. And you can, um, you can drop this into other maps in very interesting ways. And of course, he's got some of these other things like this really cool uh, light source. Then he's got this. Again, you need token magic effects active for these effects to actually work for you. And then here, he's just using one of my overlays. This is, you can tell it's one of my overlays. I use this symbol. And he just dropped it into this room and it makes a nice crypt. If I turn on quick edit mode, I can actually pull these covers off and I can see things underneath. And I've got assets where you can customize what's underneath all of these as well. If you just look for crypt, you can find them. Make sure you always turn off quick edit mode when you're done. And of course, I showed you this in the demo, but this is his really well done ice caves. You can do a lot with this. These are just the, the complexity to make all these things work was really off the charts. So, you know, he really made it come together in the seamless way that I think really, really works and uh, really makes a great addition to the, the dungeon system. So hopefully you guys enjoy this release. There's a lot going on. I recommend you get to discord and ask questions. If you're, if you're wondering about, modules or how to optimize performance or or just how to use some of these things or get new ideas i have a very very active community on discord we're all sort of contributing to this we're always constantly solving problems creating new macros experimenting breaking things so i'm really trying to push the boundaries of foundry as a system of dungeon draft as the as the core system that feeds it uh, and then even breaking the boundaries of some of the artwork that we're using to make these things. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this and you enjoyed this release and, you know, let me know on discord what you think about it. Uh, thanks so much and, and have fun making your maps.